Hello fellow orchid lovers, it's Danielle here with hopefully a complete and comprehensive fertilizing orchids and watering orchids video. I've made several attempts to make a video about how I fertilize and water my orchids. Um, my methods have changed over time, so you'll notice in some of my older videos um, the information is going to be quite different. So hopefully you'll view this video and it will give you a little bit of an updated view on how I water my orchids, what methods I choose, and then hopefully um, based on some of this information, you can choose what works best for your orchids. So the first question um, really that you need to consider is what type of water are you going to use? Uh, personally, I use distilled water. So I made a little chart here. Uh, there's different types of water and each type of water has a different TDS, or total dissolved solids, uh, in that water. So distilled is typically around zero, which means that they've taken all of the solids out of the water. Um, an RO unit will usually give you a result of 15 or below. My personal tap water is currently at 180, um, but that really varies. Um, it can go as high as 300. Um, I've tested it several different times. Um, they do kind of, I guess, rinse out the system and it does drop the TDS, but since that's an unknown variable, I don't tend to use my tap water. I do have a filter uh, through my fridge and it does drop the TDS. However, because again, it's an unknown variable, I tend not to want to use my tap water. But you may have uh, well water or a source of tap water that you feel is reliable and you can certainly do that. Just keep in mind that tap water will have sol um, dissolved solids in it already. Uh, so just you know, keep that as a factor when you decide what type of water you wanna use. Um, there's also important to know the pH level. So distilled and RO water typically are at a neutral pH, which is 7.0. Um, my tap water is slightly higher than that and I've tested it before and it's been as high as eight. Uh, so again, because of those variables, I am very hesitant to use my tap water. Um, if you only have like, let's say three or four Phalaenopsis orchids and you just want to use, um, you know, your tap water, certainly go ahead and do that. Um, if that's giving you good results, then, you know, you don't have to mess with it, but I have an extensive collection. And so, you know, this is really more for the people uh, that are growing their collections and have questions about um, you know, how to fertilize and how to water their orchids. Um, now you also have to keep in mind that I use hydroponics. I grow hydroponically, otherwise known as water culture. So my TDS levels, my pH levels, everything that I do is catered to that. So if you're growing in um, organic media like bark or moss, you're gonna wanna keep that in mind um, when you tweak what I'm telling you. Um, you're also, if you're growing in inorganic media, like the Leca beads or, you know, in Ceramis, you're gonna wanna keep that in mind uh, when you make the decision on what type of water um, you're gonna use. Uh, so those are the types of water that you can use. And then we come to, you know, your TDS and your pH levels and what is good for orchids. So again, I'm going to show you a chart, but this is going to be based on hydroponics. Uh, so you're going to want to, um, you know, figure out for your method what you want to do. So this is, you know, a chart that you can find online. Um, these are all the different, oh, sorry. These are all the different nutrients, um, you know, that are very important. They're like the building blocks for an orchid uh, that you, you know, you want your orchid to be able to take advantage of. So as you can see, some of them are available at a higher pH and some of them are available at a lower pH. And so, you know, this 5.8 pH range is, you know, called the magic pH range uh, where most of the nutrients are kind of available. However, something that you need to keep in mind is that as your, um, water levels evaporate in water culture, your TDS level is going to go up. So the, the amount of solids as the water evaporates is gonna get larger because there's gonna be less water to dilute them. 
Also, your pH levels will drop as the water evaporates because as the water evaporates, the water will get more acidic. So let's say you start up here in the six range. As the week goes on, I change my water once a week. As the week goes on, my pH levels are dropping because the water is evaluating. Jet, you need to stop growling. Please, thank you. Jet, come here. Jet, come here. Don't make me come over there. Okay, we're going over there. Jet, stop. She's growling at my other dog outside. Come on, come on. Good girl. What a good girl. Okay. Sorry guys. I hope that didn't just mess everything up. Okay, so um, you have to keep that in mind, whatever method that you're growing in. With me, with the water culture, I keep that in mind because I typically um, will give them a higher pH because I know the pH is gonna drop. Okay, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, now, I'm always feeding my orchids. They always have food in their water. So because of that fact, I don't give them the full, you know, manufacturer recommended dosage. Um, usually when you get a fertilizer, it's going to tell you, okay, so you put a teaspoon, two teaspoons, and a gallon of water, and you feed them once a month. I don't do that. I feed them every time, every week when I refresh their water, there is fertilizer in that water. And because of that, I don't give the full dose, the full manufacturer's dose at every feeding because I just feel like that's too much for my orchids. So because of that, my pH when I add my um, nutrients does not drop as low as it needs to. And this is something I recently figured out and realized that I have a slight calcium deficiency because of that, because calcium is lower on the spectrum. And because I don't use the full teaspoon that's recommended, it do the pH doesn't drop. Nut the fertilizer that you put in your water is going to drop your pH. Um, but because I'm using only half of the recommended dose, it's only dropping a certain amount. It's not dropping the full amount that I want it to. And so therefore, the calcium wasn't really coming into play, and so a lot of my new growths are kind of flimsy. So because of that, I have adjusted my method. So now I use a pH down. So I use my you know, level, I only use a half of a teaspoon of my particular brand of MSU fertilizer, and I use a pH down solution to bring the pH lower because it turns out my pH was higher than it should be. It was you know, just below seven when I really wanted it around six. So I used the pH down solution to bring it into that six range before I water my orchids. And you know, I just got something online. I'm not saying that this is the product you have to get, but there's a lot of different products available online that will lower your pH and bring it to a recommended um, level. Um, again, if you just have a few orchids and you know you don't want to be bothered with this, you don't have to. But I'm just going through this for people, you know, that are trying to, you know, grow seriously and have a larger and more extended collection and are a little confused about um, fertilizing and watering because <laughs> I sure was. <laughs> um, and I'm still learning. I'm not saying that this is the end of, you know, my learning process, but I, you know, uh, people like Rick L, I mean, his channel, he has been growing hydroponically for years, not just orchids. You know, orchids are a recent thing that he's added, um, but he's been growing hydroponically for years. So he has a wealth of information about how to grow orchids hydroponically because of his background in growing hydroponically. So if you want more information about what these nutrients actually do, his channel is really great to check out. I'm not even gonna go into details. Um, I will talk about the type of nitrogen though, because this is very important. This is something I did not know. Um, when I first started growing, I had um, a fertilizer solution that had urea in it. And there's nothing wrong with urea. And there's also nothing wrong with a monocle nitrogen. Those are two very good products. But I live in New York and my temperatures don't really get that high. And in order for the bacteria to break down these nutrients and make it 
usable to the orchid, you need a higher temperature, ambient te temperature in your environment. And I don't have that, and I will never have that. And so therefore, I, tr I don't use um, a fertilizer that has either urea or a monocle nitrogen in it. I get a nitrate fertilizer because nitrate doesn't require a higher temperature in order for the bacteria to break down this nutrient and make it available to your orchids. So the type of nitrogen that is in your fertilizer is actually important depending on where you live. If you live in Florida, you can use any of these and you're fine because your temperatures are going to be high enough that you can break these down. The proviso to that is if you grow all your orchids inside and you keep your temperature inside at 60 something degrees, then no, you're not going to want to use these. You're going to want to use the nitrate nitrogen. Um, so if you have any questions about that, let me know. I don't know if I explained that um, comprehensively enough. Um, but this is the information page from the um, fertilizer, the MSU fertilizer that I use. Um, it is called Jim's. Hey, get out of there. It is called Jim's, um, and as you can see, there is a tiny bit of a monocle nitrogen, but for the most part, it is a nitrate nitrogen based uh, product. And I find that I do not get root burn because of that. When I was using these products, my roots were burning because um, it couldn't be broken down and it was burning my roots. Um, you also want to make sure that you, whatever um, solution you decide to use, whatever fertilizer uh, you decide to use, is evenly balanced. Um, you want both macro and micronutrients. And as you can see, I have the macronutrients here and I have the micronutrients here. Um, an MSU fertilizer um, really kind of takes the guesswork out of that for you. Um, so that would be a really good thing if you're just starting out um, to look for an MSU fertilizer. And then the other question that would arise is, you know, from my method, Vance, come inside. Come on, Vance, don't just stand by the back, come on. See, he's standing by the back door and he wants to come inside, but the doki door is open. Vance, come on. Good boy. See, not so scary. Now you don't have to bark. There you go. Okay, we're almost done, all right? Um, so how often do I water? Um, every week I change the water. Um, but most of my orchids are in water all week long. Okay. But I do change the water once a week. Um, like I said, there is fertilizer in my water every time I water. They are always exposed to nutrients. Um, I'm always hungry, so I imagine my plants are always hungry. And in nature, there's no one controlling when they get fertilized and when they don't. They constantly have a source of fertilizer. Every time it rains, they get fertilized. So um, I use the same method with my growing. And then, like I said, I, I change the, the water once a week. And that's basically to make sure that I don't have a buildup of, you know, the salt, the salts on the roots. I like to change, you know, rinse out the glasses. I do a really good scrub on the glasses every two weeks. And I also grow with those little, um, those little beads the glass beads so I try to clean them you know every two weeks just to make sure I don't have a buildup of algae um, but as I mentioned in my last video I'm not really concerned about algae so much as maybe some other people are um, yeah so that's basically um, what I do as far as fertilizing is concerned I'm sure that this is probably going to uh, raise some questions so please feel free to ask um, I may make a secondary video based on the questions that I receive um, but I hope that that was, you know, informative and really helped you to, um, you know, get a little bit of a basis of knowledge as far as um, the types of water that you use, your TDS levels, your pH levels, um, the type of nitrogen, you know, the macro and the micronutrients. And then too, you know, um, I did pick up a TDS meter and a pH meter. Um, you don't have to go to this extent, but I mean, this is, this was really helpful. Me, the TDS meter really helped me rule out my tap water. I was using my tap water, and when I started testing it with this, I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's way too high. And then the pH meter, it's really going to help you to keep from getting nutrient deficiencies. It's going to help you to know where your pH is because. It, it's only at certain levels that certain nutrients are gonna be absorbed. So if you're constantly having a high pH, those 
you know, nutrients on the lower spectrum like the calcium, your plant's not gonna get it and your, your plants need calcium to grow. Calcium is like the building block of growth for your orchid, so you do need calcium. Um, so, you know, just, just keep those um, things in mind. Again, if you have any questions, let me know and I will talk to you all next time.